Now we also need to learn different ways to represent inequalities. We can represent them as a line graph or interval or in words. Let's start not with an inequality but with an equality. Okay, so something like this. X is equal to 3. How would we write this in words? X is 3. That makes sense. How do we graph that on a line graph? Any ideas? See if you can guess how they do it. Well, they just do this. Put a circle on 3. <laughs> okay, that's it. So x is 3, and that's an equality. Now, an inequality would be something like this. x is less than or equal to 3. How do we describe that in words? X represents all numbers less than 3 and 3, so less than or equal to 3. So all numbers less than 3, and you could also say including three okay so for this one we just have x is three it's one number for this one x represents all numbers less than three including three so x represents two and x represents one x represents zero x represents negative one negative two negative three negative four all these numbers does x represent also one half well, half is less than 3, isn't it? So, yes, it does. Does x represent, um, let's say, 1, or let's say, 2.9? Is that less than 3? Yep, there it is, 2.9. And also, say, um, it represents, say, 2.5. Let's go there. So, it represents all the decimals. Does x represent the number 3? Well, it represents all numbers less than 3, including 3. X is less than or equal to 3, so it does. It represents 3 also. And it represents all these numbers and all the numbers in between it. So how would we... How many numbers does X represent anyway? Infinite. It represents an infinite amount of numbers. All these decimals and all these, you know, decimals and fractions. All the way... As, as, as far negative as you can go. So all the way to negative infinity. And the number line goes to negative infinity in this direction. And in this direction, it goes to positive infinity. Does x represent 4? Well, 4 is not less than 3, so 4 is not included in the set. Does 5 doesn't work, or 6, or 7? These are all greater than 3. Okay? So what we can do is put a square bracket over the 3, like that. Um, this is saying that x is 3 or less. And fill in the number line and, and, and fill in the arrow here. So this is the line graph of all numbers less than or equal to 3. Okay. We'll come back and do the interval in a minute. Let's do another one of these. If you had x is uh, less than negative 1, okay? Less than negative 1. Words, x represents not just one number, but a whole range of numbers represents all numbers, you could say, less than negative 1. So x doesn't represent just one number. It represents a whole range of numbers. Uh, for example, negative 2. That's less than negative 1. Negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, all these. How about 2? 2 is greater than negative 1, so that won't work. Uh, how about um, negative 2.5? That's right here. That works, doesn't it? And all the decimals in between. So we have all these numbers 
on all the decimals, all the way to negative infinity. How about negative two or negative sorry negative one negative one is that in the set? It says x is less than negative one, but it's not equal to negative one, so negative one is not included. How about negative zero point nine 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 nine? Would that be in the set? That's right up to negative one, but doesn't quite reach there, so that is included. So all the numbers up to negative one, not including, and when it's not including, we put a parenthesis like that to show that it's as far as negative one, but not including negative one. Okay. So I guess we've got to make make a note that um, these square brackets mean included. Whereas the parentheses mean not included. Okay. So let's have a look at this one for example. X is greater than or equal to zero. How would we describe that in words? Write it down. So press pause and write down what that would be. X represents all numbers greater than zero, including zero. Okay, so it represents 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all these numbers, not just one number, but a whole range of numbers. Um, does it, is 0 included in the set also? It's greater than or equal to, yeah, so it is. And this time we've got to use these square brackets, okay, to show that it includes 0 on all these numbers, all the way to positive infinity as the number line goes to positive infinity in this direction so it starts at zero goes to positive infinity okay so um, let's see if you can figure this one out um, let's see well we can come back to that let's I guess at this point might be better to do the intervals. Now an interval is always in this form. Min, comma, max. The minimum number in the set, comma, and then the maximum number in the set. If we have a look at this example, this line, and always, like the line graph is usually the easiest thing to figure out. So always work on that. This is showing all numbers from 0 to positive infinity and all the numbers in between. What is the minimum number in this set of numbers? The smallest number we have is 0, isn't it? Yep. What's the largest number in this set? Well, this set goes all the way to positive infinity, so that's the maximum. So we have 0, comma, positive infinity. Next, we've got to figure out, is 0 included, or is positive infinity included? Is 0 included in the set? Well, it's greater than or equal to, so 0 is included, so we put a square bracket here. Is positive infinity included? We can never actually reach positive infinity, so we can't actually ever include infinity, because we can't actually reach it. So beside infinity, we always have a parenthesis, which means not included. So again, square bracket means included, parenthesis means not included. Let's do an interval for these ones. Interval, always write down min, comma, max. Look at the line graph next. We have this set of numbers from negative infinity to negative 1. Okay, and all the numbers in between. 
So write down what's the minimum number in this set. Okay, what is the least number in this set from negative infinity to negative 1? The minimum is actually negative infinity, isn't it? What's the maximum in this set? The maximum number in this set is actually negative 1, right? Now we've got to figure out is the minimum included or is the maximum included or what? Well, we cannot ever reach negative infinity again, so we can't put a square bracket around infinity because we can't include that in any set because we can't reach it. So we always put a parenthesis beside positive or negative infinity. Now, is negative 1 included? It says x is less than negative 1, not less than or equal to. So that is not included, so you put parentheses. And now this is actually looking just like an ordered pair. But beware that this is not an ordered pair. It's not an ordered pair. What is it? It's an interval, okay? Intervals look like ordered pairs sometimes, especially when the min and the max are both uh, actual numbers and not infinities. Okay. And let's have a look at our first example and see if you can get the interval for the first example. So see if you can count, figure out what the interval would be for this. Okay? X is less than or equal to 3. So press pause and figure out the interval. Well, always write down this, min, comma, max. Okay, we've got uh, no numbers from negative infinity to positive 3. What's the minimum number in this set? What's the maximum number? Minimum, negative infinity, maximum, positive 3. Can we include negative infinity in the set of numbers? No, so put parentheses. Is 3 included in the set? It's less than or equal to 3, so yes it is. Just like on the line graph, you've got the bracket. This is a bracket. Okay, so let's do one more for fun. If you had this um, as an interval, let's start with that. If we had 2 comma, positive infinity, parenthesis. So I bracket on the two, positive infinity. Let's get the inequality, the line graph, and the description all together. Where should we start? Should we do the inequality first, the line graph, or the description? Best thing, usually, is to start with the line graph. Okay? Always start here, because this will give us a visual representation of what this is. Okay. What we remember with an interval, an interval is always written min, comma, max. So the minimum number in the set is 2, the maximum is positive infinity. So we look at 2, and that goes to positive infinity. So we've got 2 and positive infinity. Right? Let's do this. Oh, square bracket on the 2, so put a square bracket on the 2, just like the interval. Fill all the numbers in between and fill in the arrow for positive infinity, now we have the line graph. Probably easiest now to go and do the description. X represents all numbers between 2 and positive infinity, including 2. You could say that. Or you could say, X represents all numbers greater than 2. and including 2, right? As an inequality, that's all numbers greater, greater than or equal to 2, isn't it? So x, where did the x come from? We made it up. <laughs> it's, it's a variable we use to represent all the numbers in here. x is all these numbers in here. X represents, X is everything here. This is X, all these numbers, okay? So X is greater than or equal to 2, okay?
Now let's have a look at a compound inequality. What if we had x in the middle less than 5 and greater than or equal to negative 1? Okay. Let's put that on a line graph to begin with, say. Now you might best start by changing the compound to two separate ones. So you could say x is, and um, go from here to here, read from x to the negative 1, x is greater than or equal to negative 1, right? x is greater than or equal to negative 1, and x is less than 5. So we could do these one at a time. Greater than or equal to negative 1 would be negative 1, and all these numbers here, and negative 1 is included. Less than 5 would be, you've got 5 here, doesn't include 5, so put a parenthesis on it, and all the numbers in between. Okay? So, that would be the line graph. And we could do the description or the interval next. Let's do the description. X represents all numbers. between, let's use that word, between negative 1 and 5, and then we could use this word, including, including what? Does it include 5? No, but it does include negative 1, so we'll say all numbers between negative 1 and 5, including negative 1. Between does not mean negative 1 and 5, it means everything in between. This is between. Whereas we've got to use this word including to include one of the um, one of the boundary points, so to speak. As an interval, remember, interval is written min, comma, max. So you can write down the minimum number, maximum number, and then use parentheses or brackets as needed. Minimum number in the set is negative one. The maximum number is five, right? Negative 1 is included, so put bracket. 5 is not included, put parenthesis. Okay? Good deal. Now let's try this. If you had negative 5 less than x, and that's less than or equal to 0. Okay? Press pause, see if you can figure out the line graph, the interval, and the description. <coughs> well, we could change this into two separate inequalities, like this. X is greater than negative 5. X is greater than negative 5. And X is less than or equal to 0. Okay? And then plot each one in turn x is greater than negative 5 means x could be negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, all these numbers, right? Or indeed negative 4.99, that's greater than negative 5. But it can't be negative 5, so we need a parenthesis here on the line graph. Okay, so all these numbers, x is less than or equal to 0 means all these numbers less than 0, but it could be equal to 0. So bracket on the 0 to show that it could be 0, okay? And everything filled in between. As a description, we could say x represents all numbers and use the word between. Between what? between negative 5 and 0, right? Including what? Does it include negative 5? No. Does it include 0? Yeah, including 0. Okay. And then write down the interval. 
min, comma, max. What's the minimum number in the set? So x, again, represents all these numbers in here. All these numbers. Not including negative 5, but including 0. The minimum is negative 5. The maximum number is 0. And x is all the numbers in between. 0 is included. Negative 5 is not. Okay? Let's say you had... We'll do one more example. Let's say you had an interval that looked like this. Negative 6 comma negative 2 and it had parentheses first of all this looks like an ordered pair but it's not an ordered pair because we're told it's not okay it's an interval right well, it's not an ordered pair it's an interval just be careful of that then go ahead and figure out the inequality, the line graph, and the words. And press pause and try and do it. And again, I always like to start with the line graph. This is the minimum. This is the maximum. So we have negative 6. And we have uh, negative 2. So we're talking about a set of numbers, and the minimum in the set is negative 6, the maximum is negative 2, and we're talking about all the numbers in between negative 6 and negative 2. Because of these parentheses, we can see that negative 6 is not included, negative 2 is also not included, but that interval represents all numbers in between. So we fill in the number line between negative 6 and negative 2. Okay? Then I'd probably like to write down the description. Uh, all numbers between negative 6 and negative 2. That's what we have. Uh, or for ex we, we could, we could um, come up with this variable x. And this variable x could represent all numbers in between negative 6 and negative 2. So we could write um, x, which we've just, you know, made up, we've come up with it for fun, x represents all numbers between negative 6 and negative 2, including what? Well, not including anything, okay? just, just the numbers between negative 6 and negative 2, not including negative 6 and not including negative 2. And as an inequality, we can say, okay, x represents x is greater than negative 6, and x is less than negative 2, right? Now, do you think you can change that into a compound inequality? Yep, yeah, and you need to. You need to put the x in the middle, the maximum over here, the min over here, and turn it into a compound inequality. Which number is bigger? Negative 2. So x is less than negative 2. Which number is lesser? Negative 6 is lesser. So x is x is greater than negative 6. Reading from here to here, x is greater than negative 6. And x is less than negative 2. Okay.